There are three types of intermolecular forces we will worry about in this class. The most elementary are called dipole-dipole attractions. These are simply the attractive forces between polar molecules. We said already that polar molecules will attract each other. Polar molecules attract each other through dipole-dipole attractions. So if you have a molecule that has a positive side and a negative side, the negative side of one molecule will attract to the positive side of its neighbor. That's simply put a dipole-dipole attraction. Biology teachers probably discussed hydrogen bonding at some point. Hydrogen bonding is simply a stronger form of a dipole-dipole attraction. Hydrogen bonding occurs between particularly polar molecules. The reason it's called hydrogen bonding is because the molecule needs to have at least one of three of the following bonds. It needs to have a nitrogen-hydrogen bond, an oxygen-hydrogen bond, or a fluorine-hydrogen bond. These bonds just happen to be really polar, and if you look at the electronegativity values, you can confirm that for yourself. If a molecule is experiencing hydrogen bonding, it just means that the dipole-dipole attraction that's occurring is even stronger than you would in a normal molecule. Whenever you see an NH, an OH, or an FH bond within a molecule, you know that it can experience a very strong hydrogen bond. The third type of intermolecular force that we have to concern ourselves with are called London dispersion forces. Now, London dispersion forces were discovered outside of Berlin. The reason they're called London dispersion forces is because they are credited to Fritz London, who is sitting on his bench next to Erwin Schrodinger, perhaps discussing his cat. It's possible for even non-polar molecules to have attractive forces. We talked about in the previous video that non-polar molecules will attract other non-polar molecules. And this can be done through London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces are the result of what we call an induced polarity. Now the word induced means that you force something to happen that wouldn't naturally happen on its own. Molecules that are nonpolar can be forced to become polar. They can have induced dipoles. And once they have these induced dipoles, well then the dipole from one molecule will attract the dipole of another. So the book shows this very simple model of a helium atom. Helium atom has two electrons in that 1s2 orbital. But the electrons aren't stationary. The electrons are moving around randomly throughout the orbital. And if they're moving around randomly, it's possible that the electrons will find themselves on one side of the molecule and there'll be nothing on the other side of the molecule. Well, that random motion means that the side where the electrons are is negative and the side without electrons will be positive. So that hydrogen atom has for a moment become polar. It won't stay that way. The electrons will move around and they will neutralize again. But for any split second in time, it's possible that the electrons are more on one side of the atom than the other, which means the atom is slightly polar. If you bring one slightly polar atom next to another, well then the positive side of one atom will attract the electrons to another. And then that will force or induce that atom to become polar and then you get kind of a chain reaction. The atom in the middle will force an atom next to it to become polar, and now you have this attractive force between it. Now, in this diagram, the attractive force is relatively weak, but the more electrons your atom has, the stronger these dispersion forces can get. So you can actually scale these dispersion forces based on how big a molecule is and how many electrons are present. So let's see if we can identify intermolecular forces in a few molecules. We want to see if the following molecules have blended dispersion forces, dipole-dipole attractions, or hydrogen bonding. So let's take a look at a methane molecule, a chloromethane molecule, and an ammonia molecule. Methane, CH4, we saw previously. That's simply C with four H's. That is a tetrahedral molecule and it's nonpolar. We have to ask ourselves several questions. Is there hydrogen bonding? Well, there's hydrogen, but the hydrogen is not bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So there's no hydrogen bonding. Is it polar? Well, we just said it's not polar, so there's no dipole-dipole attraction. The last question is, does it have electrons? because if it has electrons, it's capable of experiencing London dispersion forces. Yes, it has electrons. Counted the eight balance electrons, those bonds right there are electrons. 
So methane will experience London dispersion forces. Those will be the only intermolecular force that it experiences. For chloromethane, we are substituting one of the hydrogens with a chlorine here. So let's ask ourselves some questions. Is there hydrogen bonding? There's hydrogen, but again, no NH, OH, or FH bond, so no hydrogen bonding. Is it polar? Well, it's tetrahedral, but because we have the chlorine around the carbon, in addition to the hydrogens, this is going to be a polar molecule. It's asymmetric. So if it's asymmetric, it's going to be polar, it will experience dipole-dipole attractions. Are there electrons? Well, yeah. The bonds are electrons. The electrons around the chlorines are electrons. So it can experience London dispersion forces as well. The NH3 is nitrogen with three hydrogens but also has a lone pair. Is there hydrogen bonding here? Yes, you have NH bonds here. That's one of our indications of hydrogen bonding. So there's going to be hydrogen bonding here. Is it polar? Well, yes, for a couple of reasons. Hydrogen bonding just means it's extra polar, so we know it's polar if it has hydrogen bonding. But also this lone pair on the central atom makes it asymmetric. So there's going to be dipole-dipole attractions here. Does it have electrons? Well, hopefully at this point you realize that they all have electrons. So everything that we test will experience London dispersion forces. As we look at the intermolecular forces here, we can see the methane, the CH4, is going to have the weakest intermolecular forces. The chloromethane will be somewhere in the middle. And the ammonia, the NH3, is going to have the strongest intermolecular forces because it experiences all three. So in the homework, you're going to be asked questions like, which substance will have the highest boiling point? Well, the substance that will be hardest to boil will be the substance that is held together the strongest, the substance with the strongest intermolecular forces. So in this case, the NH3 would have the highest boiling point because it has the strongest intermolecular forces.